This is our Cypher Pro, which is nearly identical to our Cypher, except for it's a fully carbon fiber construction. So our Cypher Pro system weighs in at 5.5 pounds. This is our lightest, smallest system to date. So this is our Cypher Pro micro cooler. It looks exactly the same as our Cypher micro cooler. The Pro version, the only difference is it's a half a pound lighter. It's eight ounces lighter than, than the aluminum version of our system. I wanted to run through what you can expect that's gonna come with the system. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can actually use or not use them. So I'm gonna kind of walk through that. Um, so the system itself, uh, unlike our other systems, has uh, three feet of, of cooling hose already built into it. So you're not gonna need uh, a cooling tube unless you need, need it to be longer. And so we sell extensions, of course, for that. And unlike our other systems, our inverters are built externally. So this is the inverter system that's for this, the, the Cypher. This steps up the voltage from 12 volts to 24 volts. We have this available uh, in a lightweight version as well. So when you place your order for this system, if you're looking for some serious weight savings, one of the easiest ways to save weight is to opt for our lightweight inverter. This inverter only weighs six ounces versus 1.7 ounces for the encased model. Uh, most of our guys who are running the Cypher system opt for the lightweight uh, inverter because obviously they're doing it for size and weight uh, reasons. This system also comes with a remote control. The main reason why it comes with a remote control is because there aren't any controls on the system. There, there's no way to control it except for with the remote. So we have an extension for the remote. You can actually use it uh, and as a dash remote, just like you would on the uh, Quantum Pro, for, for example. Um, but generally, this, this system is set up like this, where um, the remotes use more just for programming and setup. So um, you can dial in the fan speeds from the remote control, which is the fans or the condenser fans, and you can also dial in the uh, temperature in which you want the system to maintain. The, the, the system, system set up now um, with low, medium, and high, low being 32 degrees is the lowest setting. It'll continue to run at max uh, until it gets to 32 degrees, and then we have a 55 degree setting, which is optimal, which is our medium setting, and our high setting, which is 70 degrees. Also, there's a power cord included. You may not use it if you're opting with, to use the uh, lightweight inverter, but this power cord will plug directly into the back of your inverter, your, your, the, the inverter that's included with the normal kit. A few more things. We have uh, a plenum. I want to show you that real quick as well. This replaces the fan system that's actually on, the, the, that comes with the Cypher system. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take these fans off just to give you an idea what those look like. It's easily removed. It's just four screws. I'm gonna pull these fans right off the top and kind of give you an idea how this operates when you're using the plenum uh, in, in, in lieu of the uh, in, inline fans. These fans just easily unplug. This whole piece comes off. I'm gonna sit it to the side here and um, this plenum will replace it. But there's also uh, a catch to that. So obviously we have no fans. We need, to, we need to have a fan system to replace what was there. So what we're gonna do is um, now that we've got this plenum on here, I showed you what that looked like. Let me give you an idea of how this would actually work because we're going to be routing air from outside the car with a NACA duct. Um, I've just kind of miniaturized this uh, for this demonstration and went ahead and put, put, put a piece together for you. Um, with the kit, you get this little small harness and that small harness, I've already wired it in here as you can see. Um, goes straight to this fan. This is a, a very high performance, 275 CFM fan. And that's what you need for this system. You really you can't use any of those uh, bilge fans that you see you know, for 30, 40 bucks. You're gonna need a, a high performance um, brushless fan in order really to get the performance that you're looking for here. Um, anyway, wire that directly in. Um, with the Uber 3 custom component stands that we're using here, we just pull the wire straight through the back through the housing and bring it inside. It keeps it really neat and clean. That way that this just plugs directly into the top of this controller here. And then this plenum goes right back on top of the Cypher system like this. I'm gonna put a screw back in here just to kind of hold it together as we discuss. 
There we go. I'm just gonna put that one screw in there to kind of hold it together. This is kind of the, the, the way that we run the system most of the time, you know, we, we try to duck these systems as much as we can. They get the most performance when you're getting cooler air from outside the car. The system's only capable of about 75, 70 degrees uh, variant from ambient. So if you're getting 140, 150 degree air inside your car, you're only gonna see, you know, 75, 80 degrees uh, cooling, uh, which for most people, that's just not gonna be, that's not gonna cut it. So um, getting air from outside the car is gonna give you a much, much cooler temperature on your body. And, um, and again, with our systems, it's best to keep them, um, you don't wanna dial them down as low as they go. It's best to keep them around 55 degrees. 55 degrees is the optimal temperature to keep blood flow to your skin and actually cool your core. So I'm gonna hook this system up. I'm not gonna need this inverter because I'm gonna use a power supply here that's 24 volts um, here at my shop. And we're just gonna plug this guy right in here. And I'm gonna shut this system down, it's already on. I've actually already put our kind of favorite fitting for the system. This is, this, is a, this is called a flow lock. We don't make these, but we do offer them. And um, the reason why we really like them is they don't drip, they don't leak, uh, and they also uh, separate with three pounds of pressure from the shirts. So it's great for egress. And, um, and the fact that this system doesn't have a coolant tank like you'd find on our other systems, our V3, our Quantum Pro, um, there really isn't any room for you to have any kind of leakage or drippage because then you get air in the system and it makes it not work right. So let me show you how that looks um, because it, obviously we need, to, we need to prime the system and it's actually quite easy. So it comes with this fill bottle. With the Cypher system, you need to run a, a full concentration of coolant. You don't need to mix it. It has its own uh, proprietary blend that we sell on our website. And it just goes straight into this kettle. I'll show you how this works. I'm gonna put this together. All right. So if you're gonna use the flow lock system, which I said we do recommend uh, with the Cypher system because it doesn't leak. We have some other options too. We have some no drip connectors. Um, they work great. The only problem with those is they don't, they don't disconnect when you yank on them. You actually have to push a button to make them release. So um, some series of racing won't allow those in. Even though uh, these one and a quarter inch tubes aren't gonna keep you in the car. As you can see, they, they pull right away if you get enough force behind them. But uh, anyway. Um, so if you're gonna use the flow lock system with our Cypher system, you're gonna need a push button side and a latch side uh, flow lock in order to prime the system. And the reason why is, I'm gonna show you. Um, the system connects uh, to the push button side on the bottle. And then this shirt that I happen to have handy here connects right here to the latch side because it has a push button side on it. Connects just like that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the system on. And uh, just kind of keep an eye on these tubes. You'll see, uh, you'll see kind of how this system uh, primes itself. I'm gonna go ahead and apply some power. All right, and you can see now the system's running. Uh, all the bubbles have passed through, uh, and now that we're getting a steady stream of just coolant flowing through the system and the shirt, and there's no more bubbles coming through, you can turn the system off. With this system, it's always better to turn it off when you're not, uh, when you're disconnecting, when there's not a steady stream of, of fluid going through the evaporator. This evaporator is so small and so powerful that it will actually, even with the propylene glycol at such a high concentration, can freeze. So it's better to turn it off if you're not going to have any flow through the system. So disconnect these. As you can see, there's no dripping. I'm going to move that out of the way. And I'm going to plug this shirt right back up directly to the system. 
And here's another unit that we have with uh, our second most common uh, used fittings for the system. They're, again, they're no drips, but these are the ones that uh, they don't pull away, unfortunately, with three pounds of, of pressure like the, the flow lock. But I wanted to show you what they look like and how they would connect and, and how we would prime the system and what you'd need. So basically, you would need two sets of, um, uh, of the no drip fittings uh, for the male side would go here on the system itself and the female side uh, right here is uh, to go to the shirts. You need one more piece of the no drip connectors in order to, 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 to connect the kettle. So what we do is just create a loop with the system and you just connect it just like this. You only need to do this once a day or once a weekend really. Um, and I'll show you with that, this shirt has got clear tubes, so I'll be able to show you the kind of the flow right through through the shirt itself. Put this guy on. All right, I'm gonna disconnect that. because we saw that there was no more bubbles flowing through the system. And then we're just gonna move this bottle out of the way. This, now that we've primed the system, and we're just gonna hook this shirt up just like you'd have it if you were in the car and cut this right back on. All right, I'm gonna reattach these fans. This is the, the way that you'd receive the, the system um, from us is, is with this, these standard fans on top. I'm gonna reattach these, put them back on, and All right, in the standard configuration, uh, there's another option on the remote that I wanted to show you as well. So if you turn the uh, system on, you hold the power button for about a second and a half, two seconds, the system comes on. There's the mode button, which controls the compressor speed and obviously the temperature that the system's gonna provide you to your body. Um, but if you quickly press the power button, you can see and hear the fans that are on the top of the condenser, slowing down and speeding up. Um, I'm gonna put the mode back on high, which is, again, the high, high is the coldest temperature you can have. It's the highest cooling. Never really wanna run the phone, the, these fans that low. There's very few exceptions to where you would run, or run the fans slower. Um, obviously, in, a, in an air-conditioned car, you could run the fans lower. Um, there's definitely some Ferrari challenge, uh, different McLarens um, that we that we work with that have uh, the interior cockpit temperatures are only around 80, 85 degrees. So the fan system doesn't need to run quite so high. Um, so we're able to dial those fan speeds back. It's quieter, it's less amp draw, um, with any reason because obviously you want this, you want the compressor to stay cool, you want the uh, condenser to stay cool as well. So anyway, using the power button allows you to adjust those fan speeds. 99% um, of the time, you want to keep those on high, so you're going to see one light, it's going to be purple, uh, because the blue light that you would normally have for your compressor speed and the red light together make it purple. Uh, so keeping those both on high is, is what you're going to do in most, most cases. So the last two things that I want to talk about uh, with this system, and, it's, and they're very important uh, things to keep in mind, is, is that you want to make sure that you prime the shirt completely, that you're not getting any air bubbles uh, when you have the kettle hooked up to it, that, that there's completely no air, you're just seeing fluid pass through, and you're gonna wait a few, maybe if you can, wait 30 seconds to a minute after you see no bubbles, just make sure you get all the bubbles out. Um, a few bubbles aren't gonna hurt, but it's just good practice to make sure that you don't have any bubbles within the bottle, the bottle, the tubes, and the shirt. Um, and when you disconnect that, Again, this is gonna stay completely primed. You're not gonna to have to worry about uh, refilling it during the day. It's gonna be fine all day. Again, just good practice to plan to prime it daily. So the next day, just have you or your crew, uh, just put that on their, on their program to, to make sure that they're doing that. Lastly, 
in the box you'll find that we have a, a spare pump. This pump is, is good for over 150 hours, um, but if you, it, it's good practice again, just to plan to change this thing out prior to the 150 hours that we've, we've kind of scheduled for timing, for timing out. Um, we can replace these for you here at, at, our, at our shop, um, or you're welcome to do it yourself. That's it's why we included it. It's a fairly easy installation, two wire installation. The back cover just pops off this and it's very easily accessible, plugs right in. Um, shouldn't take you more than 10 or 15 minutes if you're handy with the screwdriver. This bottle is actually temporary. Anyone who purchases the uh, Cypher system from us will actually get an upgraded bottle that we've developed uh, that should be ready in the, in the next few months. The mold process is taking longer, unfortunately, than it should have, and uh, uh, this is a temporary solution. The new one that we have fits into this case, and it doesn't leak. You can actually leave the fluid in it. Don't put this one in the case. It doesn't have any gaskets or seals. Um, it's really just a temporary solution so that we could get this, this out and about. Um, it's been very successful in, um, in NASCAR and uh, and Ferrari Challenge and, and supercars, and it's been just great. So um, we're glad that we were able to get it out last year. We've had nothing but rave reviews. So if you need any more information on this system or have any questions or are ready to purchase, give us a call at Chillout Systems or feel free to email me at the email address below on the screen.